About seven miles outside of Spyro in far eastern Oklahoma are the remains of what was at one time one of the most vibrant and dominant cultures in all of North America. It's a piece of history dating back more than a thousand years, located just north of Oklahoma's Highway 9. Here in LaFleur County, near the border with Arkansas, is the Spyro Mounds Archaeological Center, the only prehistoric site in Oklahoma open to the public. Long before the arrival of Europeans, this was the capital of a society whose impact was felt from southern Florida to the eastern edge of the Rockies. It was an influence made possible through control of what may be considered the interstate highways of the time. Rivers, like the Arkansas and the Red, and the commerce and trade which flowed along those waterways. And that trade, that commerce, that communication, that was key to what this Mississippian Confederation, which incorporated over 60 different tribes, over 30 different language groups, directly involved over three to six million people, and everywhere from the Rockies East, that's what it was keyed on. For more than two decades, Dennis Peterson has directed the Spiral Mounds Archaeological Center. He says several different groups lived in this region, with a permanent settlement being established sometime around 850 A.D. The people who lived here, which were kind of like the rich and famous folks of the region, be like the President of Congress, built this site. They lived here, about 50 households, about 500 folks lived at the site itself, surrounded by a city that supported them that covered about five square miles, had at its height about 10,000 people. For much of its existence, this was the center of a thriving trade which extended from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. Conch shells found at Spyro are believed to have originated in South Florida, and the engraved images found on those shells served as art, a means of communication, and a badge of authority. Since only the leaders at Spyro really had this kind of conch, it is a unique item. It's a protected item. So if you have a messenger come to Cahokia that has this conch shell, immediately you know it has to come from Spyro. It can't be from anybody else. It's like a presidential seal of approval. Those shells and the abundance of copper and other items found at the site were an example of the wealth and power of this region, having the same social value as gold and diamonds do today. In fact, the items found at Spyro Mounds are often compared to those discovered in the tomb of Egypt's King Tutankhamun. Not only is there more art found here at Spyro, more stuff in general found here in the 1930s, but it is also so much more artistically sophisticated than anywhere else in the U.S. is. I mean, there's a piece here and a piece there that's similar in other groups in the East, but nothing like here. Here at the museum are freshwater pearl necklaces, decorative copper plates, arrow points, and figurines such as the big boy pipe. Many of the relics were taken, some would say looted, from this mound, the Craig Mound as it's known today. In 1933, a group calling itself the Pecola Mining Company began digging at the mound, looking for gold and silver. They didn't find any, but did recover artifacts which were sold to collectors all over the world. We have people from every part of the globe who come to Spyro, into Oklahoma, to be able to see the materials from here because they've seen it in their collections. I mean, everywhere from the Louvre in Paris, the British Museum in London, National Museum in Germany, there's stuff in uh, the Hermitage in Russia, there's stuff in Leningrad, Yugoslavia, Saudi Arabia. The Craig Mound was the final resting place for hundreds of leaders who were buried here, along with items to demonstrate their status in the afterlife. That often included the leader's unfortunate personal entourage. Your spouse and attendants, servants, are going to be kneeling on mats as you got close to the burial mound. And as the body passes by those kneeling figures, those individuals will either be garroted, which is ceremonially strangled, or they'll be beheaded by stone swords. Then the body's picked up and placed on the burial mound near that leader's body. There are also nine house mounds at the site. A house much like this one would be built for the leader on top of one such mound. When that leader died, the home was raised, a layer of dirt would be added, making the mound bigger, and another leader's house would be built on top. Peterson says the houses were constructed atop the mounds as a way to demonstrate superiority. It's kind of like when you go into a courtroom and the judge sits above everybody else, or in a church and the pastor stands on a dais. It minimizes opposition to authority. 
There was also a temple mound, which was a sort of combination Supreme Court, Congress, and National Cathedral, where major decisions would take place. Several of the mounds also function as a sort of solar calendar. Winter solstice, the sun, when seen from the temple mound, would line up over House Mound 6. The summer solstice, when the sun's at its furthest point to the north in our relationship, it would line up over House Mound 3. And at both the vernal, the spring, and the fall equinoxes, the sun will set up over House Mound 2. The site was eventually abandoned around 1450. The exact reason may never be known, but Peterson says a century-long change in the climate may have been responsible, undermining people's confidence in their leaders. Sparrow Mounds is open Wednesday through Sunday, offering the public a chance to examine a unique part of Oklahoma history along Highway 9.